The last lesson gave us a taste of mechanistic reasoning in the relatively simple context of proton transfer. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the curved arrow formalism, which is a way of showing electron flow in reaction mechanisms. And there are a few things I want to emphasize from the outset. The first thing we're going to focus on in this lesson is the bookkeeping aspect of curved arrows, what they represent and how they show the conversion of reactants in a step to products of a step. And it's going to be important to really master these bookkeeping aspects because curved arrows have deeper meaning that's grounded in localized orbital interactions, as we'll see a bit later in this lesson. And if you haven't mastered the bookkeeping aspects, in other words, what curved arrows actually represent in terms of electron flow, it's going to be really difficult to tap into that deeper meaning. One of the major driving forces for organic reactions in general is this idea that electrons flow from relatively electron-rich regions or electron-dense regions to relatively electron-poor or electron-deficient regions. Curved arrows show us this in a highly visual and intuitive way. But there's an underlying structure to the curved arrow formalism as well based on localized molecular orbitals, n, pi, sigma, and the antibonding counterparts, a, the empty atomic orbital, pi star for a pi antibond, and sigma star for a sigma antibond. And tapping into these localized molecular orbital descriptions is important for understanding organic reactivity on a deep level. We're going to begin with the bookkeeping aspects, and I'm actually going to defer to a set of videos prepared by Alison Flynn, an instructor at the University of Ottawa in Canada, which does an amazing job at laying out the bookkeeping aspects of the curved arrow formalism. And in particular, there are three videos that are associated with three fundamental skills associated with using curved arrows. The first is a description of the arrow symbolism in general. And by the way, these videos are linked within the slides, and I'll link them within the playlist on YouTube as well. The first is just a general overview of what curved arrows represent and how we draw them. The second relates to the skill of drawing the curved arrows for a step given the structures of reactants and products. And this involves recognizing the differences in structure between the reactants and the products and drawing curved arrows to represent those changes. And then the final skill is drawing the products of reactions based on given curved arrows and a given reactant structure. And the idea here is that we're given the reactant structure and the electronic changes that occur in the form of the curved arrows, and from these we need to draw the product. This is all bookkeeping in the sense that if you understand what a curved arrow represents electronically, then there is a logical deductive process to go from reactants and curved arrows to products, for example, or from given reactant and product structures to curved arrows. And you want to master this before getting too deep into the curved arrow formalism.